What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Battle for LA show, part of the Clutch Points and Blue Wire Networks. As usual, Tomer Zarli, uh, your Clippers beat writer here for Clutch Points. I'm joined by a special guest today, uh, Larry Nance Jr. of the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, is joining me today. Larry, how are you doing, man? Good. How are you? I appreciate you having me. I'm, I'm doing well, and I appreciate you always liking our graphics and sharing them on occasion on Instagram. I'm, I'm glad you enjoy them. We, we try to be creative and, and fun with them, so I'm glad you like them. Yeah, you definitely are. So, uh, first off, um, how are you doing? How's your family doing? I know, you know, the pandemic is still going on. Um, still, still kind of a crazy time, you know. Uh, how, how are you and your family doing? Everyone's good. Everyone's good. No complaints. Uh, um, staying happy and healthy. You know, knock on wood. Just uh, uh, we've, we've been very fortunate. It's good to hear. Um, what, what's this been like? I, I mean, you see you're in your hotel room right now. What, what's it been like playing right now, especially on the road when you – can't really go anywhere. can't leave the hotel room. You're kind of just, you know, in a room. Um, it's tough. You know, obviously, you know, people, you know, we're social people. Um, you know, everybody has friends on the road and friends on different team. Like, you know, right now I'm, uh, uh, we're in Boston and one of my, you know, one of my closest, you know, closest teammates, Tristan Thompson's here, here, you know, so I can't, uh, you know, can't go dinner with him, can't do nothing. So, um, it's, it's different. Um, but at the same time, I think, uh, you know, to make this work, everybody has to make certain sacrifices and, and uh, right. collectively, I think we're doing a good job of that. Well, I, I wanted to jump right into the, um, you know, some of your latest games. Uh, you guys had two very impressive games uh, recently against the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, obviously, all the attention was on the big three of the Nets, uh, but you guys came out two games in a row, uh, calm, collected, composed, two big victories. Uh, what was that like? Because I, I don't know if you saw this, but League, League Pass said that was the... Uh, most watched game of the season, the first one, uh, the Colin Sexton show. So, uh, what, what was that? What was that game like? Those two games, like? Uh, no, it was great. Um, you know, I think everybody was expecting us to come out and just get drubbed by those guys, but right. Uh, you know, we, you know, we always believe we could win. Um, yeah, obviously, that team is is a title contender. They're going to be there at the end of the year when uh, you know only the best teams are left. But. Um, you know, we, we believe that we have a shot to do the same as well. You know, we're, we're, we're scrappy. Um, you know, we're energetic, you know, we, we've got young guys, uh, great vets. And, and so uh, playing a team like that, we took it as a challenge and, and, and wanted to, you know, take it as a chance to kind of show the, show the league, show the, you know, show basketball fans that this Cavs team is for real. I mean, you guys are eight and seven. Uh, you guys are for real. You guys are, in, I think, two games back of the two seat, which is pretty incredible. Um, you know, it's a tight knit Eastern Conference, but I don't think many expected you to be where you are right now. Um, I know it's early, but is are you guys looking at the playoffs or how do you guys take this? Uh, we take it one game at a time. You know, playoffs is, is you know, 60 games from now. We're not, uh, we, we can't afford to look ahead of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, tomorrow we play the Boston Celtics, you know, a team that, that, uh, you know, we're very capable of beating. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, taking the challenge. I'm sure, um, you know, that uh, Jalen and Jason have been uh, unbelievable this year. Right. And so, you know, I'm looking forward to the challenge of, of getting to guard one of those two guys and, and uh, you know, potentially, potentially hang another big win in our, in our W column. I think um, when it comes to uh, Colin, a lot of people sort of pegged him as a high energy kind of defensive guy, not really known for his offense as much, I guess, especially with the shooting. Uh, but he's just proving to be a real stud, isn't he? Uh, Colin Sexton is the real deal. You know, I don't know how many times we got to keep telling people that. Look at his stats. Look at his numbers. Look at however you want to look at the game. You know, people love advanced stats. People love all that type of stuff. Look at any kind of any kind of stat. That man is the real deal. You know, we have a. Uh, um, you know, he's, he's shooting efficient from the field, shooting efficient from three, shooting efficient from the line. Um, I, I mean, he, he's done his part uh, to earn the respect he's gained. I guess for you, like, you know, we saw you come into the league. You, I don't think you were necessarily a three-point shooter, but you've really added that to your game now. Uh, you're sort of all over the place. You get your hands in deflection, steals, blocking shots at the rim. Uh, I guess, is, is there an area that you pride yourself on or do you just enjoy doing all of it? Uh, I enjoy being a jack of all trades, you know, uh, you know, since I've gotten in the league and even before I was in the league, a guy that um, one of my favorite players, um, you know, and then, you know, people feel certain types of way about him, but Draymond Green is, is someone that I've, uh, you know, always tried to emulate a little bit. You know, I think he's 
his uh, basketball IQ is incredible. Um, obviously, his, his the way he plays defense, the way he leads that team, how vocal he is, is is um, you know often often underappreciated, and and um, right. that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. You know, be our version of that. Um, you know, I, I've worked on my three point shot. Um, you know, this year I'm uh, really locking up on the defensive end. I'm, I'm I'm being more vocal. I've become more of a leader on this team, and so. Um, yeah, I'm definitely, I've definitely taken a few notes out of his book. Now, I think you were more of a traditional power forward coming into the NBA, I would say. Uh, but the mm-hmm. game, as you know, has evolved into a lot more small ball. You're like basically a five now. Uh, you can play the four, but you play the five. What's that transition been like for you to being more of a you know floor spacing five as opposed to just traditional four? I mean, what's great is uh, this year I haven't uh, – before I was playing some five, even small ball, but this year I haven't um, – I've gone down in, in – in position oh that's actually. true you guys have the trees <laughs> yeah power forward and now this year um this year well k love out i'm still mainly a power forward but um this year i play a lot of three as well um i guard twos i switch onto ones and sometimes i guard centers so um i'm all over the court um i'm most comfortable at the four but um you know obviously with the way basketball is going it's uh, i wouldn't if you ask me what position i play i just tell you a basketball player i you know put me at two three four and i'll figure it out um, you decided to do something that I thought was, was pretty incredible in asking uh, local businesses to send you apparel uh, so that you could, you know, rep, rep and promote them um, throughout the game, throughout the season. When you go to games, you can take photos and all that. Uh, just tell me a little bit about that. And why you decided to do that? How is that something you decided to do in the first place? Um, you know, for, it started off as just kind of a, uh, just a conversation in our training room. You know, we were talking about the my cause, my cleats thing that the NFL does and how cool mm-hmm. that is. They get to represent um, different, different things that mean the most to them. And, you know, we were talking about how we could bring that to the NBA. And, you know, we just kind of, you know, formed it into, um, you know, benefiting, um, benefiting Cleveland. You know, the, Cleveland is something that, you know, I, I grew up in Cleveland. I'm from here and, you know, I love these fans. I love these people. And so, um, you know, for me, you know, obviously, you know, being, being uh, very fortunate during the pandemic, there were people that weren't. Um, and, and a lot of that was the local business owners and, and the shop owners that had to close down and have to keep paying rent on spaces that uh, people aren't allowed to go into. And so, you know, they're hurting right now. And, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to, you know, do a little something to help boost, uh, lift them up, you know, lift Cleveland up and see, um, you know, how many people we could get to um, join in on the fight to, to lift us out of this. And so um, it's been it's been going on for I think we're on game 16 tomorrow and mm-hmm. uh, Jersey sales uh, every single game are going over a thousand dollars. So we're getting, nice. uh, um, you know, we're getting these businesses some much needed, uh, some much needed relief in terms on the financial end, but also. Um, a lot of publicity, um, you know, and a lot of representation from the, um, you know, from, from that end as well. So uh, it's, it's been exciting. You know, I'm, I've got uh, another good business to wear tomorrow against Boston. And, and um, you know, I'm just so thankful for the way our community has embraced this project. What's the reception been like from players, fans, I don't know, people around the NBA in general? Uh, it's been great. You know, I've had opposing players, you know, come to me and be like, hey, man, this is awesome. Like, this is something that um, you know, more people should do of, and same thing as fans, you know, they've been incredible, you know, uh, these jerseys still going over a thousand dollars is, you know, Hey, it doesn't have anything to do with me. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm just one guy. Nobody wants 72, you know, nobody wants 72 Larry Nance Jr. Jerseys, but, <laughs> um, it's more about the, um, it's more about the businesses that people are supporting. And right. so, and the Jersey is just a cool incentive for that. So, um, you know, I, 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 it wouldn't be able to be done without the people that are um, the people of Cleveland, the people that have been supporting thus far. And, um, you know, I would also be remiss to uh, not give a shout out to, uh, to Josh Hart, who, who, who did, who, who bought one of the jerseys oh, um, nice. this year as well. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's been one of my best friends since, like, since I got in the league. And so, um, yeah, I guess that kind of goes to show the support that other players in the league have for it. And, and, um, you know, stuff like that. So hopefully we'll see it gain some more traction and, and, um, you know, just keep, you know, keep boosting the, you know, keep giving people some help. You mentioned growing up in Cleveland. Um, I'm curious, what was it like growing up for you having, um, a famous father in the NBA guys that the fans looked up to and were watching nightly? Like, what was that for you? 
Um, I never really thought anything of it. You know, I, I wasn't big into basketball until later in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I didn't, you know, people would come up to my dad all the time and shake his hand and talk to him and ask for a picture or an autograph or something like that. And I just, you know, I mean, I knew he played, but I just, you know, I just didn't pay too much attention to it until, mm-hmm. you know, I started really realizing how, um, you know, how good he was and started caring about basketball until, you know, when I realized like, oh man, this, this dude could really go. Did, did you, well, you said you, you started getting serious about it in high school. So is that when you yeah. really thought you, you know, pursue the NBA? Oh, no. Um, <laughs> the NBA was a, I played basketball just cause I liked it a little bit. You know, the mm-hmm. NBA was, I, I wanted to play soccer. Really? Um, Perfect world. Yeah, that's, you know, it's a close race between basketball and soccer, which one's my favorite sport. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, I didn't play basketball. I didn't really care about basketball until about 17 years old. What was your uh, dad, you know, was he encouraging you to play basketball? Did, did he think you could make it to the NBA ones? Like, how, how does that, how does that, I'm curious, how does that conversation go? Because obviously he's a very successful NBA player and there's a lot of, I guess I don't want to say pressure, but there's a sort of expectation on their, um, their kids sometimes. Yeah, there's a, there's a definite expectation, but he was great about uh, not, you know, not forcing those expectations on me. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they came from other people and that's just what it was going to be. I have, I'm named Larry Nance Jr. in Cleveland. You know, of course everybody <laughs> knows. What my, but, um, you know, he, he, look, and during my soccer games, he was the, loudest parent on the sideline you know him and my mom were great you know bringing oranges at halftime and doing all that good stuff they were um they're great they've been great uh and even now you know I have a great relationship now I call him before and after every every single game because um he didn't force me into it because I, I, I got to fall in love with the game by myself um and you know whenever the day comes when I have a you know hopefully have a um, have a kid that's interested in sports. I'm just going to let them find their own way. If, if basketball's, uh, if basketball's the game they choose, terrific. If it happens to be tennis or lacrosse, then great. I'll be the best parent at that. Um, and I think that's just the best way to be. Uh, you see a lot of burnout. Um, you see a lot of burnout from people that are playing bat ball for this long, but, um, the way my parents did it is how I hope to do it. Do you, I mean, I'm sure you talked about this before, but do you remember um, where you were in your immediate emotions when you found out you were being traded back home? Uh, yeah, I was in my car going to practice with the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I mean, they told me I was going to Cleveland, but it didn't mean anything at that point. It was, uh, you don't want to get traded, right? I didn't want to mm-hmm. get traded. Uh, I loved it there. Um, you know, the organization, the people were great. Uh, LA is beautiful. Um, yeah, I still love their fans. Their fans are terrific. Uh, they still have mad support for me and I appreciate that, but, um, yeah, no, it it was, it's never fun when you get traded abruptly like that. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I called the first person I called was my parents and they just, you know, they they thought I was lying, you know, like, all right. (laughs) But, uh, you know, ended up, you know, ended up being, you know, the best thing I could have hoped for, you know, I, I love it here. And I, I would, you know, I, I would, if, if I could have it my way, I'd retire at Cleveland Cavalier. So you, it's safe to say there was a, a different wave of emotions where it was like, you know, upsetting because you don't want to be traded, but then realizing you're going home. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, realizing that, you know, at, at the time in LA, we, we just weren't very good. Um, you know, but getting to go to a, you know, a championship contending team and getting to play with one of the greatest players of all time mm-hmm. uh, and, and my childhood hero, you know, he grew up in it. We both grew up in Akron, really. So um, was, you know, something that I'll never forget and an experience that I'm extremely thankful for. Um, but more so just, you know, be getting to play for the team that I grew up a fan of and, you know, getting to look up and wear the same jersey that is hanging in the rafters is um I think that's there's only one person in the world that gets to say that, and uh, it's, I'm very fortunate to be that one. Uh, you you only got to play with him briefly in LeBron, but uh, what would that what was that experience like um, for you? Obviously, you said you both grew up in, in Akron. Uh, you watched him as a, as a kid. What was that experience like for you? Uh, surreal. I mean, it was it was something that you know everything he said, every 
um, you know, every word he had, you know, positive or negative about our team and, and every uh, ounce of advice, everything he says just carries so much weight because of the caliber of person and player he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was, it was something that, um, you know, you just, you, you want to play well, you want to play hard because you see him giving it at all. This man's 36 and still the best player in the world. That's incredible. Um, you know, I think, um, yeah, being able to play, I, I got to play with Kobe and Braun. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's unheard of. You know what I mean? Like I've yeah. had an unbelievable, unbelievable career thus far. And I, I, I certainly, um, the experience I've gotten to have, I, I, um, I'll never forget. And playing with Braun was, was one of them. I think he's, um, you know, he, he doesn't need my praise, but I think he, <laughs> you know, he's, he's obviously, he, he's my greatest player of all time, but more so than that, just, just the work he does off the court is, is what makes him, you know, spectacular in my mind. Do you feel like what he's done off the court has inspired other players to get more involved in, in, in social events and social issues and, and I guess leave an impact on their communities? 100%. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know who what a Republican was, what a Democrat was. I didn't care. I couldn't figure out, uh, you know, it just didn't matter to me because our president, had, you know, I just didn't think about it. Like, all right, the president's something you learn about in textbooks. I just, you know, until, you know, guys started speaking up more about it. And I see like, you know, Ron cares about this. Damian Lillard cares about this. You know, Chris Paul cares about this. Like, all right, let me, you know, let me look more into it and see, um, you know, and learn exactly what's going on. And, and once I did, um, you know, I saw how just important it, it, it is and can be. And so, um, yeah, you know, he, him and him and the the leadership of our league has has have done a spectacular job of educating, you know, of educating us, you know, the the players as well. But um, done a great job of of you know making their voices heard and and making um, you know, the change, uh, we want to see heard. And so, um, yeah, you know, his, his off the court work is just as impressive as his on the court. Tell me about, um, playing with Kobe Bryant. You mentioned it earlier. Um, mm-hmm. what was that experience like for you as a, I believe you were a rookie at the time. Yeah, I was a rookie. It was, uh, terrifying, exciting, nerve wracking. Um, it was I, like I want to look back on it and say it was the best, but like I just remember my emotions then, and it was just like in awe. You were just in awe of him, you know, because like Kobe, you know, Kobe was like he's a walking legend, right? Like he just you shoot the you shoot the paper piece of paper and trash can, you you yell Kobe. Like right. people that don't basketball know what that is, and so. Mm-hmm. um you know, plus, you know, he has, you know, his reputation was like, you know, being rough on his teammates at practice. And so like, I didn't know what to do. Um, but you know, I get there and, um, you know, he was nothing but kind to me. And, uh, yeah, I, I'll never, I'll never forget that. Um, cause he had several opportunities and, um, and, and, and reasons to, to not be so kind. And so, um, you know, I just, uh, I think the world of him, um, I, I thought it before uh, everything happened last year. So, um, you know, he, he's the man. He's the man. How much of that? I mean, I guess there was that tweet incident and all that, but how much of your concern with, with getting along with him was, was about that? 100%. All of it. Mm-hmm. All of it. You know, he had a chance to, um, you know, great. I, I was, I don't know how old it was. I want to say I was 16 when I tweeted that and it was, it, it, it was stupid. You know, it was stupid. Yeah. People do stupid things when they're young. And, and I, I made a stupid tweet. Um, um, I, I, I made sure I, I texted him, you know, he was on vacation uh, after the draft or something. And I texted him and, and uh, you know, just apologized for it and everything. And he, you know, texted me back right away. Just said, Hey, water under the bridge. Don't worry about it. Welcome to the team. It was like the greatest sigh of relief ever, but it was still, <laughs> he could still make my life hell. Um, but he didn't, you know, he had an opportunity to ruin my career before it even started. And uh, he took that opportunity to um, teach a young basketball player. And, uh, you know, for that, I'll be forever grateful. Uh, I wouldn't be right here. I, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't be 
uh, I wouldn't have gotten to play for Cleveland. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten to play in the finals at all. I, he, he could have ended my career right then. And so, um, yeah, I'm thankful to him for that. And like I said, forever, he'll be, he's good in my book. Um, because he, he, he could have ended my career before it started and he didn't. You were, you were obviously there for his, uh, 60 point finale. Um, only so many people were there. I mean, obviously people in the arena, but people who engage with him on a daily basis, uh, talk to me about what, what that night was like, because watching him from TV, I mean, you, just as a basketball fan, you're standing up cheering, like you're happy, but what is it like for you? What was that night like for you? Uh, disbelief, uh, a little bit stressed. Um, it was just disbelief. I mean, you know, we had been through that. It was a horrible year, right? We lost so many games and he was so hurt and you could just see him pushing through and battling through so many nagging injuries and ice on the sidelines and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, to see what he did that last game was like, okay, I need to not mess this up. Like, I don't know how I, I just need to, you know, me and Julius were just trying to grab like hungry hippos, trying to grab rebounds and give it to him. Just don't no dribbles, no nothing. I just want to grab the rebound and get in your hands before I do something stupid. Like just take it and go do you. Um, and then once we, he turned it on and we started coming back and ended up winning that game. It was like, it didn't hit you until after the game. Like he threw a pass to JC to close the game, Jordan Clarkson and, that's when it was like, oh, shit, we just did that. He just did that. Um, it was unbelievable. And, uh, you know, we all we ran back down the court. And I think I was the first one there to go and hug him and just like, you know, tell him thank you. You know, just thank you for this performance. Thank you for this year. Thank you. Just thank you. Um, and then then comes, you know, Julius D'Angelo and JC. Or, yeah, Julius D'Angelo and JC to come hug him afterwards. And it was just um those moments are something I'll, I'll i'll always have i'll never forget and and uh like i said he's just the man is there a uh i mean is that your favorite moment with him or is there a moment off the court maybe what you mentioned earlier that you have with him or what's your favorite moment with him um i think my favorite moment was yeah that 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 hug after his 60 point game just you know thanking him for everything you know his career um what he taught me um this game it was the experiences you know just i think that was that was number one wait well, there's um there was a story i hope you don't mind me asking this about like rob palinka promising you to, not to get traded or to buy a house i don't know what it was but mm -hmm. that that was sort of that sort of trended and do you remember that what happened there uh yeah i remember it trending and all that stuff um look this is the this is this is a to to um, to boil it all down, right? Players are pawns in a game, right? We're you know very handsomely paid pawns in a game, right? Um, so come trade deadline time, no matter who you are, you're nervous. It's just mm -hmm. the name of the game. That's the nature of the beast. Um, so trade deadline time, you know, it was it was one of those where I didn't want to go anywhere, and and. Uh, you know, everybody was trying to figure out, you know, my name was in things and all this type of stuff. And, and, um, you know, I, 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 you know, I asked those guys like, Hey, you know, should I, should I be expecting something? And, you know, they gave me, I don't know where that story came from. It didn't come from me. Um, you know, they gave me said, what every GM is going to say, Hey, look, like we like, we love you here, but if somebody if somebody offers something that we can't say no to, we can't say no to it. Like mm -hmm. it just, that's the nature of the beast. And, and uh, you know, I appreciated their um, honesty about that. And then this story came out and I, but I, and I quickly debunked it on my Twitter, you know, just said, Hey, that's this, you know, me and Rob have a great relationship to this day. Like, no, right. what happened? And, and uh, you know, but there's, you know, there's always going to be stories. There's always going to be, things that people come up with, you know, to sound good. But I think that was just a narrative, you know, created to try to go against Rob Palenka. And, you know, I, I'm not part of that. Did, uh, did playing with both Kobe and LeBron, I mean, 
the media scrutiny, um, just everything is just under a microscope, uh, especially with those two, I guess. For you were there for the finals year with LeBron, Kobe's final year. So everything was literally under a microscope. Did, did that teach you anything about how to go about your business, how to conduct yourself? Uh, it did. Yeah, it did. Uh, more so the LeBron year than Kobe year. You know, we all, you know, Kobe's last year, nobody expected anything. They were just there to watch Kobe. And I could have showed up to the game naked and nobody would have known because they were all staring at him, <laughs> which they should have been. Um, but, you know, LeBron going to the finals with him was a different experience. You know, um, the kind of attention that a team like that demands and, um, the kind of publicity that, that the guys on the team had, the names and the followers and all the, all that stuff was um, too much for me at the time. Uh, I didn't know how to handle it. I, I handled it poorly looking back on it mm. uh, in terms of like, you know, my s- just stress levels and trying to figure it all out. And, um, you know, I, I just, I just wish, I wish I could be the player in person I am now on that team in 2018. It would have been, um, I just wish. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot. Um, I learned a lot, you know, I, biggest thing is in terms of life, you know, my, you know, I would took a lot of, that, took a lot of that stress home with me and was grumpy and moody and all that. But, um, you know, now it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I you, know, you just learned to, you learn to handle it and, you know, a season like that, uh, uh, you know, a run like that really makes you, um, really makes you learn how to handle things quick. You mentioned that uh, Josh Hart was one of your best friends. I'm curious, everyone always pits those um, those former Lakers together, the Ingram, uh, D'Angelo, uh, Randall, you, and Josh Hart. I think they, they they say, oh, this is the young Lakers. We're always going to root for them sort of thing. Do, do you still get that? And are you guys still close? Do we still get that? Yeah, we all get that. I mean, <laughs> I, I could be, I could be uh, you know, it doesn't matter what team I'm on. People are still, I'm still a baby Laker in people's eyes. You know, it's, (laughs) you know, it's, it's cool though. It's cool though. You know, like I said before, LA has got a terrific fan base and I appreciate them for embracing me while I was there. And I appreciate them for still rooting for me now. Um, um, But yeah, you know, I, I, uh, I could go down the line, you know, I, I could go down the line, Brandon Ingram, you know, great basketball player, better person, Julius, in Julius Randall, great basketball player, better person, Josh Hart, great basketball player, better person. Um, you know, all those guys, I think the Lakers did a good job of, of accumulating basketball talent, but the people that they had, the people that, um, the people that, that, uh, that were there were, uh, a one people. And so, yeah, I still stay in contact with them. I, I, um, I love and appreciate them all. And I tell them that every, every time we get to see them, you know, and, uh, play against each other that you know, I, I'm always rooting for them. I, I try to send them texts before every season, wishing them luck and, and wishing them well. Um, you know, they're, I'm, uh, um, I'm, I'm a huge fan of that group. I really am. Uh, now t- take me through, cause obviously you're a Laker in 2016. Um, but you're from Northeast Ohio. You said your heart was here. LeBron, Kyrie, Kevin Love lead the team to a title. How do you, like, are you ecstatic? Are you happy? Like, what do you go through watching that series down 3-1? Uh, I was thrilled. Yeah, I was thrilled. You know, I, it's, yes, I was a Laker, and I, I wanted to win every game, especially against the Cavs while I was a Laker. Um, but, yeah, when they won, it was I was thrilled, like I was a fan, you know, because we weren't going to win. So if we're not going to win, I might as well have, you know, my hometown win. And so I was happy for Braun. I was happy for K-Love. I was happy for Kyrie. I was happy for Tristan, the whole team. But more importantly, I was so happy for Cleveland. Um, You know, I, I, this city needed that. uh, And they're still riding on a high from that. You know, it's, uh, you know, something that, like I said, the city needed, the city got, and, you know, I, I, I work hard every single day to try to do it again. We, uh, a couple of the guys and I, we, we ran a page called Cavs Nation back then. And, uh, we actually went to the parade and it mm. was, it was just something else, just a sea of wine and gold. And, um, it was, it was insane. It was so crazy. The streets were packed. Uh, the parade was delayed. It was so much fun. Did you see any of that part of any of the parade? Uh, I got to see it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I didn't go, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I uh, might not. 
<laughs> so uh, just give me something that people don't know about you. What, what, what do people, fans, just what do they know, not know about you? Oh, gosh. Um, I'll probably go with the soccer thing. Um, you know, my first love is soccer, and, you know, I still, uh, still watch every single English Premier League game, even if that means waking up at 7.30 on the Saturdays. Who's your team? Chelsea. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, Chelsea guy. So are you, are you and Josh Hart go at it on Twitter sometimes then? He's a Chelsea guy too, and oh, he'll, he? never, he'll never admit it, but I introduced him to the love of the blues. <laughs> just, it's just what it is. Uh, what, uh, what are some hobbies you like to do off the court? Um, love, uh, I love video games. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I got three dogs at home and, and, and my wife, you know, I love spending time with them. Um, I'm very simple when it comes to that. Uh, just, you know, give me a bottle of wine and, and, uh, some Netflix shows with, with my wife and dogs. And I'm, I'm good to go. What, what, what do you watch on Netflix? What's, what's your, what's your show right now? Right now? Gosh. Um, well, the office until they take it off there. I love the office. Um, yeah. my wife loves Grey's Anatomy. So I'm, it's, it's a mix of probably those two. What, uh, first of all, PS4 or Xbox? PS4. Okay, good. You're, you're on the right side of history there. I'm on the right side of history, yeah. <laughs> um, I was talking to RJ, Richard Jefferson, and he was saying it's all Xbox. He doesn't see the point of getting a PS4. And I was like, there's so many exclusives for PlayStation alone. There's, what? Well, he's, he, the point of getting a PS4 is because he's wrong with any other opinion. <laughs> what, uh, what, what games do you play? Uh, a lot of Apex Legends. Um, that's number one on the list for me, but a little bit of Call of Duty as well. But you're not streaming, right? No, I'm not a streamer. I'm not good. Okay, okay. Uh, what's your favorite movie? Oh, that's a loaded question. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Favorite movie. If you could pick one. If I could pick one, gosh, I don't know. One of your uh, top five, maybe? <laughs> one of my top five. Um, I'm a gamer, so right. I, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed. I think it might have been two summers ago when Ready Player One came out. Mm -hmm. I actually really. It was a good movie. Okay. Um, this is kind of a two parter here, but what's your favorite food? Uh, my mom's lasagna. Okay. And do you know of a hidden food gem spot in Cleveland? I know of a lot of hidden food gem spots. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna throw one out here on, on the show? Um, let's go with Courtyard Cafe. Um, that I was born and raised in Courtyard Cafe. Like it is, it's in Brexville, Ohio, in between my house and the practice facility, so it's perfect. Um, and it's they've got everything from their grilled salmon and wild rice is great. Uh, they got this chocolate chip banana nut muffin that is like the best um blt is good literally everything the wings and ribs <laughs> it, it's to die for is great but bonus, that's bonus wings or the bone in bone in for sure bone in okay uh what's your favorite city to play in cleveland uh if you retired today what would you do next um uh, i'm looking into ownership group of soccer teams in england that that sounds like something you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Who was the who's the funniest teammate you've ever had, and is there a story you can provide uh, to prove that? Uh, either Tristan Thompson or Channing Fry, and um, Chan uh, to go with Channing. Yes, on his final game, his retirement night, uh, there was a little party afterwards, and um, he got me. I think me, Tristan, K Love, and him were up on a like a karaoke bar stage singing <laughs> uh, Bohemian Bohemian Rhapsody. So, like, that's the he was. He would get um, he would get you to you know do things like that. There, there's there video footage of this that that'd be something I'd be interested in watching. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a, there's a reason there's not video footage of it. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Um, let's see. Paper. so anything else you want to you want to plug um you know any foundation or i know you have the local business initiative you're promoting anything else you want to promote uh no i think we covered it you know the local business thing is is my baby right now and uh you know i appreciate your willingness to help
Oh, of course, of course. We'll make some nice graphics out of this. Get 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 the word out on it for people who don't know. Um, Larry, where can where can people find you before you hop off? Where can people find? What do you mean? Social media. I don't know. Oh, social media. Yeah, Twitter, Instagram. Those are my two. Uh, at Larry DN seven or at Larry DN twenty two. That's me. Larry, thank you very much for joining the show. I appreciate you taking the time. I know you're busy through flights and COVID tests and all that, so I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Awesome. Uh, thank you. All right, we'll catch you next time.